And then I went back home and I said, I'm not going to do nothing. So I put the fishing poles in the back of the truck and went out to the uh, Paul's Valley Lake, threw it out there for about one hour, two hours. And then I came back home and relaxed. That is my day. Got ready for church right now and praise the Lord. I'm glad to be here always. Always glad to see everyone here. Amen. It's, it's, a, it's an honor. Out there? No, I didn't. I think I'm going to go back tonight. I think. Okay. All right. Pass the mic. Pass the mic on. Don't everybody jump to it at one time. Don't everybody jump to it at one time. Okay. Thank you, Steve. All right. Giving honor to God. I think you're going to have to, to talk to Nail. I don't think she liked that mic thing. Like that. Okay. <laughs> it's not like being on the video. <laughs> uh, I, my day was... It was okay, but you know there was some problems, some troubles going on. But that's all right too. I'm, I'm still trusting and, and leaning, depending on God. Uh, it started out a good day, and uh, it ended up with a little, little, little trouble. And uh, sometimes, you know, we we take take the bad part wrong at times. Uh, but it started making me think maybe I made a wrong decision in doing something. This, but uh, I asked God to, you know, just to help me and to be with me. But uh, it's, I've been cutting hay all day, and then a tractor went down on me. Or something. Oh, mm-hmm. Another tractor? Uh, oh, damn I don't know. <laughs> maybe I'm in the wrong field. <laughs> but that's how my day went. But I thank God that He able me to get on here and. To be on time and to take care of business, and and that's the that's the main thing. I'm I'm still good. <laughs> all right, all right. This is Mel. You just laugh. So you all right? <laughs> no mask. Okay, my dad was a little melancholy. This is my last day of leisure. Oh, I, I start back to work in the morning, so it's I always got a mixed feeling on these days every year. So other than that, it was fine. We need you to sign. You want you to sign. My day started out good. I had plans. I just feel like uh, it ended up very hectic and I felt like I didn't have enough hours in the day to get everything done, but here I am. Amen. Yeah. Amen. 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 Uh, I had a chance to to fellowship with a guy yeah. that uh months ago me and him almost got real tangled up with each other, but we had a chance to sit and talk about God today. So that was a good thing, you know what I mean? So I kinda know where he's at, so we're both on the same planet. And I and I thought we're on death. We're you know, we're looking at the same thing, and that's God. So we're everything was good today. It was hot. But it was all right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Brian, I got it. All done. <laughs> I didn't do nothing. <laughs> ready, ready? Yeah, I mean, that's a good thing. I pulled a double last night, and I'm very shy. Yeah. Okay. I just don't want nobody getting my way. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Had a great day. Amen. All right. Very productive. Okay, I'm praising the Lord. Amber, you get Amber to say something? Sing. I'm trying to say Amber and Sister Nail off. I had a good day. Um, my son's having some problems from the the last spot on top of the guy, so I need extra prayers for him. Just side effects from the medicine, I hope. That's all it is. So I've just been trying to keep an eye on him, make sure everything's going all right. But... Other than that, it's wonderful. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you. Good. <laughs> <laughs> you to go get a mix with that. Oh, my God. Oh, God. I'm just nervous. I can steal it. Hey, that's it. Check it out. Check it out. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, 
like a dog at the hospital. Uh, I got some new stuff up, but, uh, and then uh, with that incident a couple of weeks back, they have a notice in one of the papers, so we're still working on the rest of them. All right, thank you. Brother, just that time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We ain't putting you on the spot or anything. How is your day? I like spots every now and then. Okay. <laughs> I like positions. My day's been good. Okay. Bless it. I'm happy to be here. Uh, I can't complain. It's been warm. It's the only thing I complain about. But I've had great ah, It's been warm. <laughs> it's been a blessed week. My grandmother's back home. Amen. Uh, 24 hour supervision, which in my eyes is a blessing, you know. Uh, you know, you, you think you're supposed to grow up and separate from the from the wing, but the more I'm seeing, the more my situation is blessed. I I love being with my family. I love the conversation. I love our foundation that we have in God. So, and, and I love that they just keep me rooted, grounded. So I'm blessed right now. I, I can't complain. Right. You're the last one. <laughs> Even Jacob got on the mic tonight. <laughs> Jacob like that mic. <laughs> Man, um, I need you to pick a number from one to a hundred in your head. Right now, number from one to a hundred in your head. Okay? And, and pick a number that, 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 that you can win, you know. Think like you want to win this game, okay? You want to win this game. I want you to write it down, okay? You wrote, the, you wrote the number down? One to a hundred. You wrote it down? When you, when you have it down, say amen. amen. Okay. Now I need you to pick another number from one to a hundred. Okay, a different other number from one to a hundred. Like you want to win the game. So you have two different numbers. From one to a hundred, like you want to win. When you got that down, say amen. 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 Everybody, so everybody have two different numbers. One to a hundred, like you want to win. Now I need you to do it a third time. Oh, look. <laughs> so you have three different numbers. One to a hundred. <laughs> We're playing this game. And uh, it'll unfold as we go through our study tonight. All right, you have that number down? Okay, so you have three different numbers, one to a hundred, and you chose the numbers like you wanted to win. Okay, and it should we have a tie, we're going to go by uh, birthdays, the month, the birthday month, okay? And if, and if it should be, it shouldn't be a tie, then if it should be another tie, then we go by the, the date itself, okay? Okay. Well, we want to thank you for being in the household of the Lord tonight, and uh, we're glad that you come. We always like to place this vision before you of the church and solicit your prayers uh, that we be able to accomplish this building. Uh, 2013, getting it right. That's my hand. Let's do that again. Get it right. Bethlehem. Bethlehem. Get it right. Okay.
Okay, and this is our theme for this year. We're praying that God will enable us to get it right so we can do it right, we can be right, and we can glorify Him. Amen? Amen. We're continuing in this series, uh, the series uh, about maintenance. I wanted to encourage you to continue in your walk of faith. Galatians chapter 6 tells us to, to, to not give up, to not give up. And uh, we want to encourage you to not Give us. Amen. Amen. This is a little off. Let me see if I can change it right quick. Hey, look, all right, yeah. right there. Uh, our title tonight is what? God, God at work. God at work. Okay. And what text are we coming from? All right. Let's read this out loud together at the same time on three. This is the NIV. A little off, but we'll have to work with it. Uh, on three. One, two, three. And we know that in all things, good God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. Amen. Who have been called according to His purpose. Now, tonight again, we're talking about God at work, God at work. We're going to talk about the God of the plenary or the complete, the God of the positive, the God of the purpose. We want Christians to know tonight that Christians should trust God in all things. Christians should trust God in all things. And we're talking about God at work. God at work. I'm going to, for time, I'm going to bypass this first video. And uh, this is a question that we have. Do you see that question? Is God. Is God what? In control over all things in our lives. Is God in control over all things in our lives? And the person that's going to answer this question is the person that has the number closest to 50. What number? What number? My first or my second? It's the first number. This is the first number. First number close to 50. Mine is 50. Oh, okay. <laughs> You're the lucky one. <laughs> Let's give God a hand clap of praise. Is there another? <laughs> is Timbo close? No. Nail yeah, yeah, yeah. close? Mine, mine. <laughs> 44. Okay. Okay. 48. Okay, we're going to hear from 50 and 48, okay? I'm 59. Nail has 52? I have no. We're going to chase Nail. Like, y'all leave Nail alone, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Deacon, is God in control over all things in our lives? Yes, He is. He is? Yes. Okay, you want to expound upon that? Every part of his word tells me that he, from the beginning of time, knew exactly what Melvin was going to be doing, where he was going to be at, what he was going to, how he was going to be doing it, and what he was going to have to go through, and how he was going to react <laughs> to those situations. So, yes, he knows, and he is in control of every aspect of my life. Wow. Okay. Okay, that's good. Let's that's hear from 48. 48. Sister Jackson, I thought you 48. No, I'm 88. <laughs> okay. 50. Who's 44? Timbo. Okay, go ahead. No, but he was 54. He's 52. He's 53. He hey, we're here from both of them, okay? Timbo first. Or thank you, Sister Andy. What was the question again? <laughs> it's it's all the question. Is God in control of all things in our lives? Yes, He is. Yes, He is. Uh, I think, uh, like, sometimes God... Okay. <laughs> when you're younger, you learn, and as you get older, you know, and... God is in control of your life and a lot of times He'll let you do things to see what you're going to do. Like you say, Melvin, and this is Timbo's philosophy. I mean, 
see how you're going to react. I think sometimes, God, when you when you blow it or do something wrong, or I think God sits and watch to see how you're going to react. Because as you get older, like I'm 44 and my journey with God is getting better and better in life. Used to when my kids would make me mad, I'd spin out of the roof on them. But now, it's like I can sit and hold a conversation with them. And it's like this unless I need to get my belt off and then it gets loud other <laughs> But uh, yes, he is in control of our lives. And, and, and just like with your kids, you teach them and you hope they know, I think that applies with us, with yeah. God. Yeah. All right. You know, he... He teaches you, you teach us, and the people that you talk to, you learn as you go. And and it's God's Word, because anytime I talk to somebody, I'm going to go back and look at myself. And uh, he just kind of, he's in control, but he wants to see how old Timbo is going to react or whatever situation it might be. Okay, that's good, that's good. Let's learn. Yes, God in control over all things in my life. Yes, even even uh, when I know that I, I'm going to go do this and go do that, I still ask him, I say, Lord, I, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. I, I hope it's okay because I'm asking, I'm seeking him first. You see what I'm saying? I seek him in the morning and I, and I seek him before I lay down at night. So I know that everything is all right each and every, each and every step I take, even at walk, even at work. Each and every step I take, and when I talk sometimes, I might say something wrong, and I say, Lord, forgive me, because I'm going to get on this person, or do that, or do that. But I know, since I'm 52 now, since I've been seeing things, here, I've been here and I've been there, and, I, and I've learned how to listen, and understand, and pay attention, and pray, and seek Him first. Okay. Amen. And I learned that. So everybody in here says, yes. Does anybody disagree with that? Uh, let's go to the text. It says, uh, and then plenary means complete. For we know that all things, all things we're talking about, God works for the good of those that love Him. So all things in our lives, God works. But the question is, what happens, and this is talking about the Christian, what happens to free will? In other words, will God make you do anything? No, of course not. Yes, he will. So, wait, oh, wait, wait, wait a minute, uh-oh. We got two varying opinions. Somebody said no, and somebody said yes. <laughs> well... I say no. I say no because if that was the case, then then everybody would walk around Christian. They would know who God is. They they would have no other choice but to know who He was. And then if that was the case, then they would know about His sovereignty, His divinity. Period. Like that's the that's the end of the argument to me. Like there's no other need to to argue. If you know who God is, you know what He can do. You know the power. But free will like you said free will i believe there is a free will and that's the pleasure of, of knowing the kind of god that we do serve okay. is because he gives us free will uh, i don't think you could know him and you can know his power without the free will wow here you wow. Wow. amen uh somebody said no uh i said no uh, uh, okay now explain your point well, right now I'm having a brain freeze, but uh, <laughs> but you you help me with the person because I can't think, but I know what I'm talking about. The uh, the one that got swallowed up in the well. Jonah. Jonah. Okay. He he. God had a call on his life to go and do something, and he refused, and God swallowed him up in the well until he spit him out for him to go do what he needed to do. So, God gives you free will, but when God has a call on your life. For something that he wants done, he's gonna you're gonna get you're gonna get to doing it or you're gonna die. That's mm. just the bottom line. Mm. Amen. 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 So really, the way I would answer this question uh, for you theologians is yes and no. <laughs> Sometimes, 
because it, it, that's true. He did uh, make it, I would say, more convenient for Jonah to do what God wanted him to do. <laughs> that's called his discipline. <laughs> so in a sense, but uh, uh, in a sense, he did kind of make him. Uh, when we when we when we talk about the when when Moses came up to uh, come against the Pharaoh, what did uh, uh, God do to Pharaoh's heart? Hardness. Hardness heart. Wait a minute. He was trying to free his people, but at the same time, he hardened Pharaoh's heart. That's pretty deep, man. You think about that on the way home. <laughs> Go ahead, Dick. Look like you want to say something. Say, and the reason why he hardened Pharaoh's heart because Pharaoh would not truly uh, change and get converted mm -hmm. to who God wanted would have called him to be or, or would have asked him to be else he wouldn't have hardened his heart because you know uh, there's part of the scripture that says that lest they hear with their ears and believe in their heart and be converted mm -hmm. that part is where Pharaoh just would not be converted to the God of Israel mm -hmm. so therefore he hardened his heart because God already knew in the plan what he was going to do to Pharaoh in the end Hmm. So, uh, the way I would answer this question is, not is God doesn't affect our free will, but He does, especially for the Christian, makes it convenient for you to discipline you to the point that whether you will obey Him or, as this Etah says, uh, He'll go ahead and take you on to heaven. Correct. Amen? Can we agree with that? So in all that, everything that's going on in our life, everything, our, our the, the choices that we made, you say you say God, uh, and we know that that in all things God, in all things he, he works together for our good. What about those bad decisions we make? If we know if we got free will, we can go out and disobey. Will He? Work that together for good? Like the brother said, he already knew. He already know what you're going to do. So, so he's but it's, it yeah, if it you read. It all has to do with your, that God knows that whether we're going to repent. Rep uh, that's what I was going to say. Yeah. Wow. Wow. And, wow. And, wow. and a lot of times, he, he I mean, the whole, off the whole book of the Bible is on, on repentance. people dis disobeying. And repenting. But having a, a, a repentant heart. Mm -hmm. And they come back and repent it, even though we come with him. Okay, and then the okay. ones that don't repent, he gets rid of them. Okay, so, so what? you said, look, the, the show me in the Bible. Now, David is a good illustration of that. Now, I know this is going to be a bit controversial. The Bible says that he was a man. After God's own heart. But this same man looked out over one day. Huh. Mm -hmm. Saw a woman sunbathing out there. Well, she good to take a bath and say, "Yeah, good, good to work." <laughs> and he forgot everything else. He forgot about it. And also, we, we, we like to name Bathsheba by name, but she wasn't his only woman. Hello, somebody. He had other wives. What did God think about that? He had several other wives. Yeah. He was a pimp. He was a okay, pimp. Wait, wait a minute. Now let's stop. Let's explain this. Okay. Now, how in the world did God work that whole situation together for His good when He was number one? Uh, as the deacon was saying, and many preachers don't preach this, but before they went into the promised land, God told the kings to not take harems. He sure did. Uh, like okay, he told them that. So, which meant when they went in, they still had free will. They did what they wanted to do. He did what he wanted to do. So he had all of those women with his free will. And then Bathsheba, really Bathsheba, people don't realize that she was the last straw. 
<laughs> she was the last straw. He had all that free will. She was the last straw. So can you tell me how God worked that together for his good? How did he work all that? All those wrong decisions together for his good. Can anybody tell me? Jesus came through the lineage of David. And that's what he wanted. But he okay. also wanted, you know, it wouldn't have happened probably if, if they wouldn't have repented. They obviously had to repent. He killed their son. You know, the son was dead, you know, so they had to bear uh, a judgment against the, the wrong that they had done and, and live through it. But he still forgave them. And, you know, Jesus came through that lineage, you know. Okay. So even though we do wrong and know right from wrong, he expects us to do wrong, you know, but he also expects us to repent. So that's the key, you know, but he's not going to, like, you keep doing it over and over and over and over, you know. But, okay. you know, everybody know right from wrong. Adam knew knew it too, and Eve, but they still did it. Okay, so Sister Eton talked about how that, that God worked it together for his ultimate good because Jesus Christ will come through his lineage. Okay, and she mentioned that important word. He repented. One of the most beautiful texts on the faces of Scripture to me is Psalms 51. Anybody know what that psalm says? You know it. Created me a clean heart, O Lord. And remove a right spirit within me. I mean, it is just a wonderful wonderful text especially for those of us who have blown it yeah. so so he uh, God used that whole situation and it encourages us today because when we blow it and we will blow it uh, you can go back and read that read that so so God is over everything he's, he's in control of everything we do go ahead Nate, and we'll move on and we don't want to forget the, the, what God, what He uh, uh, told the prophet to tell David, that the consequences of his actions well, was never going to leave his house, well, simply so. because he continued to disobey God, yeah. even though he did have a heart that was after God. Mm -hmm. Like you said, it was the last straw. Bathsheba, mm -hmm. the, the, the deal with Bathsheba, and the child that Bathsheba. But see. Ultimately, God still used it for His good, not only with the lineage, because of the lineage. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. there was a lot of situations. He mm -hmm. saved David's life. He saved David well, to heaven anyway. Correct. Well, you say that. You say, see, most people don't mention that. David should have died. He should have went to hell. He should have God died. And God saved his life. And like you said, the consequences was the death of the son and the sword in his household. He started having uh, ultimate trauma in his family. The consequences. But ultimately, everything worked together for David's good because he didn't kill him. The scripture did not say he went to hell. He went to hell. When he his death. So... All things, and we can look at that, and it can be encouraging for us because, especially we grown around the church, somehow we get this concept that we won't ever mess up sometimes. But that's a lie. You know, <laughs> <laughs> that's we a lot of people. <laughs> we gonna we gonna live perfect because we know to do right. Hello, I'm talking about sincere people now. I'm not talking about folk who faking and shaking. And just doing, you know, uh, Yeah, who's just doing whatever they want. But there are some sincere people who love the Lord, and they will fall, and they will be so hard on themselves, and it will be hard for them to forgive themselves because they knew better. Kicking your own self behind. I knew better. <laughs> But God says all, oh, all that stuff that you're going through, all the pain, all the hurt, all the, all of whatever's going on, the decision, the right decisions that you made, the wrong decisions that you made, all of it, He can work it together. Amen. Mm -hmm. uh, Jeremiah 32:27 says, "I am the Lord, the God of all mankind." What? Is, is there anything too hard, too hard for me? For me. It's not too hard nope. for anything. So 
So God is at work because He's in control of everything. Like like we said, yes, He's in control over everything. Yeah. I'm gonna skip this one too. Mm -hmm. uh, I need a number. Your second uh -huh. number. You got to call the number. That's, I thought you already called that one. Uh, now this is no, the second one. No, you got to call the second one. Ten. I got twenty-five. Ten. Fifty-three. I have. I have. Uh, uh, I have one. Wait a minute. Did somebody say nine? Nine. 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 I have one. Number one is the closest. Number one is the closest. Close. Sound like it. Any, we have anybody else close? Okay. Huh? <laughs> okay. So this is the question now. Uh, can you tell me of a time when God made something good out of bad in your life? Can you tell me of a time when God made something good out of the bad in your life? Number one. Mm -hmm. Okay, sister, you time to share with us. Well, the good out of the bad. Well, it's not personal, but uh, and then you know I don't I love traveling, but I was not trying to come to Paul's Valley and uh, give up my job and everything that I know to be who I am. But I always knew that I had to do, you know, follow my husband. But we had an agreement, so. Even though it was a bad time, you know, it was, you know, it has been a blessed time at the same time, you know, because I've gotten to do things that, you know, as they say on your bucket list that you you wanted to check off, <laughs> you know, I've checked off some things since I've been here and I probably wouldn't have been able to do those things if I'd have stayed and, and prevented him from coming. He would have just left me, <laughs> you know, he wouldn't have stayed. But he was trying to stay, but I had to kick him out the house so he can come on up here. But uh, you know, it's a hard thing to uproot, especially when you when you listen to the word of God. If you you know, because he's gonna always put things um, in front of you that you think you're not supposed to do, or you would never be a part of doing until you and kick you on out the door and say get get to going. You know, because even if, if you don't, he start doing stuff to you. Until yeah. you, until you uh, do what you're supposed to do. Can I think back on this? Uh -huh. yeah. If you're not equipped, he will equip you. Your destiny is already ahead of you. You just stay, stay focused, stand fast. And, and I like kind of what Sister Tom said because uh, for me, the hardest transition that I made was when God called me to the ministry from Dallas to Abilene. I mean, whoo, that was very, very hard for me. Uh, and and I wouldn't say that it was a bad thing, uh, but I would say that it was it's something that it, 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 it's something you have to leave. You have to leave everything. You know, I had a, a church that I loved, you know, would never probably have left and I loved Dallas, living in Dallas and and uh you know, I'm you know, and I'm a big city. Call myself a big city boy. I thought I was a city boy until I went to New York. New York is a real city. <laughs> I thought I'm from the country compared to New York. <laughs> but uh, in that thing, you just see how God just blessed you. I mean, he just just bless you overwhelmingly. Just bless you. That's what Sister Utah uh, is talking about. Is that you know. You, something that you wouldn't have done, perceived, you wouldn't even know enough to perceive it. Uh, and how God works it together for your good. And, and I'm just uh, just so blessed beyond measure. Amen? Amen. Uh, but anybody who's been living with their family, wouldn't, if you have a close family, loving family, you don't want to leave your family, do you? Yeah, you do. You say, yes, you do. <laughs> That's what I'm going to say. Yes, you do. <laughs> but I ain't got no problem with that. Work, uh, what you think is bad, it's good. Anybody else got any illustration of that? I do. Go ahead. I wouldn't have been working in the city. If you'd have told me, you wouldn't have been working where? 
at, at the city of Paul's Valley Water Department. Oh, okay. You'd have, you'd have told me two years ago I'd have been working out. I promise you, yeah, everything in my power that I could have done to not be there. I wouldn't have been there. Period. You can look at it. Financially, it's not a good situation. <laughs> you, can, you can just say that. I mean, you can look at it. I mean, if I was to go and tell somebody right now, hey, I'm making 850, I'd be like, brother, you're stupid. Period. Mm -hmm. But. If it, I, I don't believe it. If it had been for this situation, um, I, I don't think that you know I'd be getting as close to my family as I have. Um, I wouldn't be getting as close to God as, yeah, as I need right. to be. I would yeah. be. I would just be out there thinking mm. I'm. I'm good to go. I'm, yeah. I'm good with God, and God's good with me. Mm. That's why I would have been thinking. I'd have been content, mm. and I'd have been fine where I am. You know, mm. I have a degree that I'm not even utilizing. Mm. You know, it's taken. It's taken the support of my family for me to really realize that you know there's certain things that that god will bring you to mm -hmm. not just to leave you there well yeah. you know what i mean mm -hmm. like he's he gonna bring you so far and, and he ain't it's not for him for him just to be like, okay well you got there and you you've seen this and that's enough mm -hmm. and sometimes that's our belief that's where we that's weak and um you know you were asking do all things work to the good there's a that's a two-part question because do we let all things work to the good well, not all the time because hmm. like my aunt Audrey said don't put God in a box hmm. it, well, you know for me I'm like the reason I've never taken those tests for one was a fear you know like an anxiety with it um, and then I wouldn't have realized that hey I'm putting God in a box by Hmm. By limiting myself to that fear, hmm. I'm supposed to walk in faith. Hmm. So, yeah. I But what we need is a spell.